DN Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. Chapter 26 in the Power of Awareness. It's called Destiny. And Destiny is something I think so many of us think about. Think about whether or not life is happening to us or we are happening to life. And I think a lot of people, before they get into Law of Attraction for sure, think that life happens to us, that some outside force is deciding what we're going to experience and then thusly creates these experiences in our life. And we're just kind of walking around like robots, uh, changing and, 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 and dealing with the stimuli differences, right? Like, but it's more than that, I think. And I think for anybody that really takes Law of Attraction and starts to truly study how the power of our thoughts and focus and, uh, and feelings creates the reality that we experience, you start to realize that I think maybe through a higher power, sure, we were given this ability to paint our world, but really how we choose to paint it is our choosing. And I think that's what destiny is. Destiny, I think, is you're free to do whatever it is that you would like to do. What do you wish to experience and focus? How do you walk and navigate through this maze of life how do you respond to different reactions when maybe someone is being mean? How do you respond when something awesome happens? How do you respond when some strange person approaches you? What are we doing? How are we, re we responding? What are we creating in response to things? What are we thinking about? What are we going to bed thinking about? Destiny is a really interesting topic. Goddard does one page on it in the book. And I think it answers questions. But I think it also leaves some room for discussion. Let's get into it, and then we'll see, we'll see where we get to. Your destiny is that which you must inevitably experience. Really, it is an infinite number of individual destinies, each of which, when attained, is the starting place of a new destiny. So right off the bat, destiny is something you have to experience. All right, well, I, I can't argue that, right? Like, okay, whatever that means. But really, it's an infinite number of individual destinies, which means we've got like daily destinies almost. We've got hourly destinies. Like wherever the case is, there's certain things that we're going to do throughout our day, especially those of us that are working on manifesting, right? Maybe there's a specific person that you're hoping to bump into. Well, one of your da daily destinies is going to be bumping into that person at the coffee shop, at the library, at the grocery store, at work, wherever the heck you see them. Those are little mini destinies. In Law of Attraction, when we're thinking about all the stuff that we want to create, when we're focused on creating our life, we begin to create individual destinies, individual circumstances, individual events, individual things. They become your destiny because you've placed out into the world, this is what I want to experience. Now, granted, we do it consciously or unconsciously, or in some people, the big question is, uh, law of attraction, do I turn it on or off? Is it just sometimes working when I want it to and then otherwise I just turn off the switch so I don't accidentally manifest? No, 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 you're 100% of the time manifesting. So our destinies are created by ourselves, consciously or unconsciously, and we experience a number of them throughout our days. And then he finally kind of says, every single time you start a new destiny, you create a whole set of new destinies from that point. Again, it kind of goes back to that when you make a change, you create a number of succession steps from that moment into the future, whatever that means, into the ether, into the dimension of time, into the fourth D of time, not spatial, fourth D. So since life is an infinite, since life is infinite, let's start it that way, the concept of an ultimate destiny is inconceivable. When we understand that consciousness is the only reality, we know that it is the only creator. This means that your consciousness is the creator of your destiny. The fact is, you are creating your destiny every moment, whether you know it or not. Much that is good and even wonderful has come into your life without your having any inkling that you were the creator of it. And that is a very true statement to many of us. Many of us, things happen to us, and we don't remember where we had the thought. Frankly, a lot of us don't pay that much attention to what we're thinking, saying, and doing. I've gotten on way too many coaching sessions. Seriously, it's like over 90% of them, probably. I mean, I guess if you're asking for coaching, you're wanting some extra help and steps, right? But I've been into a lot of coaching situations where the first thing you do is just listen to somebody talk, and you start to hear 
all the little places where the doubt creeps in, where they don't believe, where they've got negative thoughts or negative beliefs, like just give them five minutes. It's all it takes for anybody that's coaching anybody. Give them five minutes talking and you will very quickly figure out why their destiny is the way it is, but they don't realize they do it. And a lot of the times it just takes that moment of pointing it out. And the first couple times they see it, they're like, whoa, okay, I see what you're saying. Huh? All right. Well, I'll start trying to pay attention. And then now all of a sudden, since you, since you know what you're looking for, you start to catch yourself when you're doing it. It's almost like those weird 3d pictures, right? The ones that are just like dots, right? And you kind of like zone your eyes on it. And then all of a sudden you see some crazy 3d picture in them. It's really cool. And for some people, it's much easier than others. I actually have a really hard time with it, but I can get it eventually. Eventually, I can get myself to blur out just right and be like, oh, there's the picture. But it's kind of the same thing. Once you know what to look for, it becomes way, way easier to find it. So Goddard continues. However, the understanding of the causes of your experience and the knowledge that you are the sole creator of the contents of your life, both good and bad, not only make you a much keener observer of all phenomena, but through the awareness of the power of your own consciousness, intensify your appreciation of the richness and grandeur of life. Grandeur, I guess, probably. When we start to notice that we pay, that we create, that we are the ones responsible for what's happening in our life, we start to look at what's happening to us very differently. We look at it through the keen observation of someone knowing that this is my creation. And knowing that anything that's happening in it that doesn't seem quite right is up for interpretation, one. Is two, like, how did I create that? Or what's going on to create that? Or why is that there? What is that a part of? Sometimes growth to be better at one thing over here. I need to grow over here. So, okay. Sometimes things are related like that. But destiny is something when you really start to shape your own world and your own life. When you take responsibility for what your life is your destiny, essentially, you start to be a keen observer. You start to notice all this stuff that's going on around you. You start to pay attention to your thoughts in a different way that you never used to before. It takes on a whole new meaning. And you really got to look at how people are behaving to you and why that person was mean or why you have this weird friend that just is constantly negative. Why do you keep them there? Why is your that friend that's so negative why are they there? The people that we keep around us are a reflection of us. I don't know about you guys, but there's been some friends in my life that I don't really talk to anymore. We grew apart, grew different. There's been relationships that have grown apart and grown different. It happens. We're all growing and evolving and changing. And again, part of our destiny. So regardless of occasional experiences to the contrary, it is your destiny to rise to higher and higher states of consciousness and to bring into manifestation more and more of creation's infinite wonders. Actually, you are destined to reach the point where you realize that through your own desire, you can consciously create your su successive dens uh, destinies. <laughs> you are my density from Back to the Future. Great line. But we're creating these destinies. Regardless if it's accidental or not, we're always trying to strive to be the best version of the highest vision we ever have held about ourselves. We're always trying to step it up a notch, or we should be anyway. That's part of what our destinies are. We're energetic beings interacting with other energetic beings in an energy world, where by changing the frequency of our energy, or essentially by focusing on something else, you solidify that something else. Or another way I frequently use for metaphor. It's a filter. It's like certain glasses, right? You, you turn out certain polarities, certain uh, frequencies of light, certain things. And now all of a sudden, instead of seeing all the bad people in the world, you start to notice, my God, there's a lot of really helpful people in the world. Why? Because I decided that I know there's a lot more helpful people in the world than I've recently been experiencing. Again, you're a keen observer to what's going on in your life. Why do I keep seeing all these jerk holes? Ha, ah, that's right. I keep saying everybody's a jerk or I keep saying, ah, there's so many jerks everywhere. You catch yourself saying it and you're like, oh, that is it. I've been saying that a bunch. All right, let's reverse it. Wow, there's a lot of really good people in the world. And at first you're like, eh, we'll see what happens. 
But then I just say it a few more times. Yeah, there's a lot of really good people in the world. A day later, I say it again. Yeah, there's a lot of really good people in the world. You know what? All of a sudden, I see this lady, like, maybe drop her purse. And, and, a, and a guy walks over. And he's like, oh, here's, oh, here you go, miss. Right? Like, wow, that was nice. Right? Or someone gets the door for somebody. Or somebody stops and lets somebody walk across, you know, in a parking lot. Right? They don't pay attention. And now, all of a sudden, you start seeing examples of how people are good to each other all over the place. It's our destiny. We create it. Our thoughts, our beliefs, our experiences and reactions to other people are what create the next thing we're going to experience. It creates tomorrow's destiny. A lot of people say destinies are given to you. God says, this is what's going to happen to you. Or Allah says, this is what's going to happen to you. Or Yahweh, Jehovah, fill in blank here. This is what's going to happen to you. And it's not Yahweh, Jehovah, Allah, uh, God, uh, Allah. I feel like I'm leaving out a whole bunch. doesn't matter. They are the ones that created this wonderful place. Like I was saying recently on the live show I did over the weekend. It's like being made, they made the Monopoly board. They decided the rules. They tell you the rules. They're like, here's the rules. Here's how the game's played. Boom, go at it. You're like, wait a minute. Well, what if I go the other way around the board? You can't, not allow, it doesn't work. You can try, but everyone else playing the game is going to nail you on it and you'll end up in no parking or something crazy, right? Like, no, you go this way. That's how it goes. What you focus, think about is what you start to experience, right? You know the rules. They call it the secret because it's the most obvious thing that has been talked about for centuries. Centuries this information has been around, probably goes back prior to Egypt. I honestly assume it probably goes back to like Atlantis or some other stuff like that, right? Like forever ago. I think this is stuff that the masters have been teaching us forever. But that maybe has been thwarted here and there. Who knows? Maybe there's some desire to make us not focus on changing our own realities because of how much power that gives us. And we're a lot better if we're little autonomous robots that just, you know, go to work, pay your taxes, buy stuff. They probably prefer that. But I think a lot of us are waking up to the fact that, nah, I think there's more to life. And Goddard certainly, and is very well done way like for the 50s if you think about what he's writing about and the fact that he was writing it in the 50s he did an amazing job wrapping this in a blanket that people could accept i mean the stuff he quotes from the bible i hear a lot of people say it's it's all in the bible it's what goddard's talking about it is but most people that really get into the bible also kind of are a, a lot more tr loose uh, translate it pretty literally and goddard does not Goddard's very metaphoric. Goddard is very metaphoric with much of the Bible. And I'm not criticizing. That's not right or wrong. I hope you don't get upset with me for saying that. It's just noticing. After reading a bunch of Goddard, and especially reading it with you guys, I realize he puts quotes in there from the Bible all the time, and he's like, yes, and this word means, and he goes into this long explanation, and this word means blah, 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 blah. So you like just read this three sentences with a few pronouns and some different words, and certain things are capitalized, and you're like, blah, blah. And then he explains it, and it's like, oh, well, that makes sense, but that is not what I read. So, eh, it's kind of interesting how it all plays out. So the study of this book, with its detailed exposition of consciousness and the operation of the law of assumption, is the master key to conscious attainment of your highest destiny. It truly is. The sheer fact of the matter that our consciousness is what creates, period, period, end of story, I rest my case, Your Honor. And the trick to getting there and to getting your consciousness to that place, to the feeling of the wish fulfilled, to the fact that you're already living in the end, to the fact that you already are or have the thing that you desire. We assume. We use the law of assumption to get us there. I assume this is going to happen. A lot of people say, well, assuming makes an asset of you and me. It does. But it especially does if you don't assume properly. Go ahead and assume something. Hey, if someone's telling you, no, don't stop talking to me. Okay, back off. Give them a break. Don't just assume that they're saying no means yes. No, that's bad. Don't use it quite like that. Assumption is that this is still going to work out, that there's still a way. I'm not there yet because right now they won't take my calls or I'm freaking them out with my weird energy or whatever. Take the hints from, from what's happening to you. Understand that maybe you're coming across a little forceful. Maybe you're coming across a little needy. Maybe you're coming across a little grumpy. 
pull it back a hair, assume this is still going to keep working. Trust me, just assume it, assume it, assume it, assume it, and kind of adjust the way your intensity is, if you will. Keep working towards it. Keep assuming it's working. And then if they're saying, ah, can you get away? You're freaking me out. Like, dude, realize you're probably coming across as a creeper. Probably. Like, don't assume that what they're saying is not true. No. The us pushed out. You're being a creeper. They're acting like it. They're reflecting creeper back on you. Pay attention to it. Adjust how you're coming at it. Again, you create new destiny from that point. Right now, your destiny might suck because you're not doing it right. You're being weird. You're being creepy. You're being really intense with your energy. You're being grumpy. Relax. Pull it back a hair. Change your destiny by changing what's going on inside of you, by changing what you're doing. If what you're doing is not working or doesn't seem to be working, adjust it. If what you're doing seems to be working, you're getting cool uh, signs and symbols and indications that you're heading in the right direction, for one. That's usually all that means, in my opinion. Text message from them. You see someone's license plate. Okay, I'm on the right path. I don't assume that means I'm guaranteed anything. Everything is a step into the next step is into the next step. At any one step, I could screw it up and say, ah, and go off in a different direction. That is the reality of it. By assuming, by being persistent, By keeping your consciousness together, you continue to step on the next step and the next step and the next step. And eventually, you open the door and there you are. There's your, ah, there's my manifestation. There's my destiny for this moment. Now, I've got more destinies that will be following. There's a destiny that awaits me the day after that destiny is fulfilled. We're not done with our destinies once we get our manifestation. His final piece of this, this very day, start your new life. Approach every experience in a new frame of mind with a new state of consciousness. Assume the noblest and best for yourself in every respect and continue therein. Make believe great wonders are possible. (laughs) This is according to the word of Goddard, right? Like, I feel like that's how I should finish this off, but he's right. Making the best of all of our situations. Revising them into better situations if they're not so good already. Revise them. Assume them. Figure out a way to take whatever it is, like, well, if it wasn't quite like this. Say, you and -and so-and-so, they're angry with you. All right. Well, I assume we can work through this anger. I assume there's a way to get them to eventually forgive me. There is a place where they start to forgive me. Again, you start to just work your brain through it. There's definitely a place where this person could forgive me. I, I, I could do astral letters. There's certainly one thing that should be able to help. So I hear, maybe you haven't tried them. If you have tried them, you probably could speak very positively about them. Or you could do your Ho'oponopono, right? Or you could do, which I, oh, anyway, I almost went off the sidetrack. Any number of things can help us get back on track. But ultimately, start assuming, well, start assuming everything's working. Start assuming that you're getting yourself in the right direction. If you're getting weird feedback, adjust what you're doing. Keep assuming you're heading in the direction you mean to. Keep feeling the feelings of the wish fulfilled. How long do you do that? Until you have your destiny. Until you get to the finish line of this particular race. And then guess what? You got another race right after. Right? We're never done. You're not done until... I kind of joke, and it sounds a little morbid, but I I don't know. I I, I think it's pretty funny, and I'm kind of cool with the day that I pass to the other side. Right? I get to go back home. But it's almost like... We learn every single thing we learn right up until the last thing. Like, you learn this all just for that very last thing you learn, and then you go to the other side. Like, you know what I mean? It's all into that last moment. And everything is like this crescendo up to that final moment where we can finish the day. Now, it's kind of a silly analogy because, of course, there's many, many wonderful peaks and valleys through that. But it is kind of funny. Like, at some point, right, we pass to the other side, and then that's it. So when you wake up every day, Understand that you've been handed a lump of clay. The potter's wheel is a great Neville Goddard story in that regard. You've been handed a lump of clay. Might be bumpy, might be smooth, might just be, right, just thrown on there. You might decide to put it on a little spinny thingy. I don't really, potter's wheel, I don't know what they call those things. I think it's potter's wheel, maybe. 
Uh, I've never done that in my life, ever once. Uh, never did ceramics. <laughs> but you get that lump of clay, you can do that. You can just throw it on a table, shape it, mold it. You got little bumps in there. You want to smooth those out. You want to use some water, whatever. It's your clay to mold. Every day you start with a lump of clay. Every day it's your clay to mold. What is it you want to experience? What do you want to turn that clay into? What do you want to think about and spend time focusing on? What would you like to experience today? Now, I do kind of recommend more so doing this before you go to bed at night, but waking up in the morning doing it is groovy too, either way. But for me, like when I wake up, I'm already like, all right, what's the day got in store for me? The second I'm awake and out of bed, anything can happen. There might be a text message on my phone to start the whole day off. Maybe there's an email. Maybe something weird happened in the middle of the night that I'm just going to find out about, and that's how I get to start my day. Once I'm up, for me, it's like, whoo, what's going on today? Should be exciting. It always is. And really, when you have that belief, when you wake up that way, it's amazing what your day holds for you. What is your destiny? I think it's our job to begin molding the clay every day. I think it's our job to choose that destiny every day. Either A, life happens to us, or for most of us that are using law of attraction and understanding this concept, we happen to life. That's really what this is all about. Dan Radio Style.